my friends. This is the Chacon Challenge. We are on day three. My name is Lynn Kuo. I'm the founder of Violin with Dr. Lynn. It's a gorgeous sunny day today and I'm in my home in Toronto. As you can see, we've had a great day one and day two so far. If you're new, welcome. If you're watching on the replay, I'm glad you're here. Please say hi. Even if you're watching on the replay, I love reading all your comments and what you have to say. If you're here live, please say hi. Hi, everybody. Say hi, Lynn. I'm watching from wherever you are in the world. Can't wait to see you with your questions. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. Can't wait to hear what you've been learning and integrating from day one and day two. We've covered quite a bit. On day one, we covered the importance of knowing the baseline and the harmony. We covered the rhythm of the dance, of the chacon. We've dived into what that rhythm means, the rhythmic hierarchy. We talked about the preparatory exercises that you can do in terms of studying double stops before you get deep into the chords and the double stops of the Bach Chacon. We, we looked at the fourths, fifths. We looked at double stop sliding. We looked at double stop hopscotching. And we've been applying them all to the chords. And in day two, we took a look at how to play chords without crunching. That was a really cool day because I gave you two tips on how to get these chords beautiful without any crunching and with the absolute most suave way you can actually execute these chords. Uh, when I um, launched day three, this is day three, we're going to be taking some of the lingering questions from the day one and day two and also some questions that popped up in the Facebook group. Thank you so much for participating and posting your wins, your practice journals, your, your practice, um, practice videos inside the Facebook group and publicly on Facebook, Instagram. This has been really great to see all of your dedication and your explorations. So let's see, um, where is everyone saying hi from? Uh, let's see, hello, hello. Okay, hi, Kendra. Rusty Chainsaw, hi. Okay, there's Chica, hi. Hello, Naya. Hello. Let's see, we have Holly, hello. Okay, we've got, uh, hi, Jeff, how are you doing? Ernst Young from the Netherlands, hello. Ishi from BC, British Columbia. Welcome, Carol. Are you seeing, I hope you're seeing me now. Let's see, okay, we are, okay, yes, we are here. Oh, Jared, hi, Jared, Philippines, 2 a.m. Oh, bless your heart, okay, Nick. My Veal's friend from Spokane, USA. Thank you for saying hi. Oh, I love seeing where you're all from. India, Connecticut. Hi, Nikki. Nikki was a special guest on day two, as was uh, Jill Ripley from Auckland, New Zealand. They are um, special guests that are from inside my Winter Violin Bootcamp, and I will tell you more about that later. Um, we have Sayumi from Connecticut. Hi, Sayumi. Melissa, hi from Iowa. Okay, this is really great to see all of you here. So let's see. Today's a big day, all right? We're, we're I'm extending this day a, bit, a little bit longer than normal. I mean, I know I was only going to supposed to do half an hour on day one and day two, but I got excited and extended a few minutes. Today, we're definitely going to go for a full hour. Okay, so get a, a glass of water, get a beverage, bring a sandwich if you like. Keep your hands clean because we may or not may or may not need your hands on your instrument. So I'm going to be announcing the winners of the Chacon Challenge. Okay, we have some winners to announce. And I actually could not decide between uh, people inside the Facebook group who wanted to play for today's mini masterclass. So I have two people joining me from inside the Facebook group, Dr. Lynn's Practice Ninjas Facebook group. I'm inviting Michelle Carlin from Australia to join me as well as Sister Marie Therese Swizinski from the United States. So you'll see them later, okay? Uh, let's see. All right. And what else do I have for today? Oh, I've got a surprise for you later today. I do, I do. So be sure to stick to the end, okay? Stick to the end. I have a little bit of a surprise for you. You're going to like it, I promise. Okay. So I would like to ask... Oh, my gosh, I have to say hi to Maria. Hi, Maria from Macedonia. So, okay, you have to go follow Maria on Instagram. She's got a great account. Follow her practice journey. I learned so much from her. Hi, Maria. Okay, Jeff. Hey, you're from Orange County. Yay. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so, okay. Titus, you're here from Nigeria. Nice to see you. Okay. Um, I want to answer a question that came in from 
Michelle Carlin, actually. She said, how much of how we play the Chacon should be dance-like? Should we be making it lighter? Should there be energy in the runs? I would love your opinion, Lynn. Okay, well, I would like to talk about this. Uh, one way, I, I agree, yes. You're gonna hear many different interpretations of the Chacon. Everything from serious and solemn, which is which it is. And sometimes you'll get a very uh, romantic approach that's uh, very grounded. Right, you might get that kind of approach. If you wanted to make it a little bit more dance-like, I do suggest you try lightening it up. And I take my cue from what the Baroque bow can do. The Baroque bow doesn't really sustain so well. We talked about this earlier in day one and day two. So what I like to do is use the C scooping method that we talked about in day two about chords. What I mean by that is you're, you're really scooping into the chord and allowing the weight to actually lighten up as you uh, travel to the tip. It sounds more like a funeral dirge than a dance. So another way I, I also apply a bit of lightness and dance um, character is I take a look at all of the slurs. Anytime I see a slur, I treat it as if it's gestural. And it could be a really long stretched out gesture. Um, at the very, very, very end of the Chacon, you have um, all of that is on one bow. All of that is one bow. Some people split it. And I used to do it that way. But if you consider it as one gesture, you could make it very much more dance-like. Something like that. Another part is uh, you could take a look at, you know what, I'm going to share my screen so you can see the, the uh, score. Oops, I'm in the G. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to share my score with you. Give me one sec. Uh, share, 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 share screen. Um, I lost the share. Why is that? Oh, I lost it. It needs to connect again. The two devices have to talk to each other. <laughs> Give me one second. They need to talk to each other. There we go. It's going to talk to each other now. Sometimes I stop talking to each other. Here we go. Come on. You gonna talk to each other? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see so you can see. Uh, I don't think it's talking to each other today. Mm, why is that? Okay, well in any case, I'm sure we all know where we are. 5.2, uh, measure 37, if you're following along. So, so again, as I said, I take any slur that I see and treat it as a gesture. And I allow the bow to taper anytime I see a slur. Here. 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 So I treat those lovingly as little gestures. like to think of any time you have a slur um, as if you have do you know those rods those beautiful rods with a ribbon on the end and so you take that ribbon and you can draw shapes 
with that slur as if it's a ribbon in the air. So even if it's a really, really long slur, so if you go forward into measure, I don't know, measure 45, here's a long slur. You can imagine this rod with a ribbon tracing it in the sky. So there's another long ribbon. Here are smaller ribbons. Now here are some more ribbons that you can draw. Here's another one. Here's another one. Okay, so these are ways that I can find a little bit more lightness. And I think that when you do find lightness, you can get the notes to dance more. Remember, we are dancing a chacon. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Michelle, about lightening up and um, creating more of a dance-like character. I hope that answers your questions, too. If you want me to clarify that, please type your questions into the chat. Okay, so let's see. Okay, one more question. A lot of people wanted to know about the arpeggio section. So I am going to go through the arpeggio section from measure 89 to measure 121, I'm going to talk through what fingerings I'm using, and I'm going to go through all the strategies that we picked up in day one and day two. Okay, so are you ready? I will not be able to share my screen, unless you really, really want me to. Please type uh, in the chat if you want me to share the screen, because I can actually take a minute to, or two seconds, if you want me to share the screen. Um, Yay, Jeff, you like the image about the ribbon? Yeah, I, I like that because then you can draw gestures in the sky, like just like watching a kite and the ribbon on the end of your kite, you know, a really long kite ribbon. I like to think about that anytime I have any slur, any, any slur in any Bach, um, solo Bach movement. And let's see, Hel Holly says that was incredibly thank you, uh, helpful, thank you. I'm glad that was helpful. Hello, Hamid Reza, nice to see you here. Okay. So let's see, okay. Okay, so I will go through, no one wants to see the, the, the yeah, you know what, it's probably better that we don't see the score because I'm, uh, I won't cover up my hands. Okay, so let's talk through this arpeggio section. I, I'm in, um, actually before that, how I get there is, I think I'll come closer to the, the camera. I'll get some close close-up time to the camera here. All right, so here we go. On this B-flat, I'm on a three. I'm gonna actually shift down in semitone, so my three is on the one. Now I'm ready to go all the way down. I'm gonna hit my computer here. Right now, what position am I in? I'm in the fifth position. This double stop sliding that we talked about in day one and two, day two. And here's the fifth that we were practicing in the preparatory exercises. I'm using my marshmallow fingers that we talked about in day two. Now I'm gonna hopscotch over to here. And here's a tritone. We looked at this in the preparatory exercises. Here is a perfect example of your choice of a double stop, double stop. Hopscotch, <laughs> or a double stop slide. So this three is going to slide here, there, so that you have the sixth here. Now I grab the fifth with marshmallow fingers. I actually played this on the second position just because my four fingers are rather short. It feels more comfortable for my hand in second position. Now I bring out the bass line. I do a double stop slide to a second position. Hop scotch to the C. Here's my bass line. Sliding. Again. 
first, second position because of my fourth finger is short. Now the bass line, no, the, the, the melody is in the soprano, so I'm gonna bring it out on the A string. Jumps up to the ear. Here is a slide to here, fifth. Four, three, four, three, suspension. Now I'm going to accentuate that A string, that alto voice. Again, I move to the second position. Now I think Nick Parker, you were asking about we're asking about fifths. So how do we do this part? Uh, so I do hold this uh, open open D and with the fourth finger G. Two options. You can just do open D with the fourth finger, or if you want to be brave and and apply what we did with the uh, fifths in the preparatory exercises, you can be brave and do a fifth on your fourth finger. There it is. Okay, if you're brave, all right? I do a double slap slide here. I do that down. Here. So you can do two options. Open D, stopping it with a four and completing the chord. Like that. So you do have to lift and put, replace, lift and replace, or if you're brave, you want to do the fourth. There it is, a fifth. So it is possible, even with my skinny fingers, it is possible. Now this is fun because now you're going to get this one sliding, 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 sliding chromatically up. Up, 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 up to the dominant and you hear the fourth suspension. Now you're going to marshmallow finger the fifth. Marshmallow this fifth. Marshmallow that fifth. Sliding down. Sliding down. Now, here is the, the famous bar that everyone asked me about. Okay, so, yes, you're going to have to put the one down and also up here, too. On the up. So, you can do what was discovered in the Facebook group. They called it a super mega ninja hop. I mean, I did not invent this, but you can, it's funny how, I think, Chica, you, you, you called it that. <laughs> so, yes, you can definitely do the hop. One, 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 and back down. Oh, I hit my skin. Or, you can just do, and just not repeat the G string, and then you can come back to it later. And I go, um, Bring out the bass line. I slide up. Marshmallow this, this. Slide down. Slide down. Slide up. And we're home free. Okay. Any questions? Did you get all that? <laughs> all right. Let's see. Um, Oh, help with the show that share the screen if possible. Okay, share it later too. Yeah, you know what? If I when it, Holly, when I do share the, the score, then my, I get really, really, really small. So maybe it's better that I didn't share the score. And you have the score at home too. Um, let's see. Hi, Jared. Wow, I wish I knew these stuff when I didn't quit violin. Yeah, <laughs> this is very informative and helpful. That's great. Hi, Douglas Melendez. Hi, nice to see you. Okay, any questions about that? My pleasure, Chica. I answered your question. Now, that was a question that Chica submitted before day one started. Any questions about that before I announce my surprise guest? Okay. Be sure to stick to the end. I'm going to announce all the prize winners, too, and uh, have a little surprise for you. Be sure to stick to the end. All right. Any questions? Last chance before I'm going to introduce the guest that I've invited for today. Okay. So, 
Today is a very special day because I've invited a special friend. And this special friend is someone I discovered online when I was studying the C major fugue a year ago, actually. Yeah, a year ago. And a year ago, I just stumbled upon this mini video discussing how to learn the fugue. I thought, this is fantastic. So I made a comment and this person was so informative, so analytical and has so much wisdom. And I discovered that they recorded the entire Six Sonatas and Partitas. Okay, their recordings released. You can check it out on Spotify. And we've connected and we discovered that, wow, we really connect intellectually about how we, how we approach Bach. I think you're gonna be really excited because not only has this person have incredible knowledge about the violin and sonatas and partitas, but they can spout off so much um, knowledge about the keyboard sonatas and the harmonic analysis. This person is in the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra, violinist and violist, Garrett Fishbach. Please welcome Garrett. Hi, Garrett. Hello, Dr. Lin. Hey, Ninja. So this year, you were actually the Jedi. I call you the Jedi. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, no. Let you know, I, want, I wanted to have this. I mean, actually, I'm taking advantage of, of your knowledge and your, your, your violinistic abilities. Everyone, I want everyone to check out his YouTube channel. Garrett's YouTube channel has Izai, not just Bach, but Izai as well. Phenomenal. And the teaching clips that I've, I've watched and followed you. Please, everyone, follow Garrett on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. It, it, just Instagram? Basically, well, Facebook. Facebook is a little bit, um, a little bit uh, inactive these days. But Instagram, there's plenty of good stuff there. OK. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, definitely check out Garrett's Instagram feed because there's just so much, uh, so many tips that Garrett is leaking out on a continual basis. And you've got to grab these for sure. And not only that, Garrett actually has a series of masterclasses specifically on Bach. And guess what? Garrett is a guest artist in my winter violin bootcamp. Right, Garrett? You're going to be giving a complete masterclass on Bach? Indeed. Yeah. I am so excited. You know what's the best part of having guests come into my bootcamp? Is that I, I get to learn too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. Oh, we have a whole bunch of people saying hi to you. Hi, Garrett. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, okay, oh, I have a bunch of people, a bunch of people. Hello, hello, everyone saying hello. Okay, sorry, Nick, breaking up the arpeggiation two and two. Okay, you know what? I, I might not be able to get to your question because since we have a little time, Nick, I apologize. Uh, Wendy Zohar, hi, Garrett. I am a mentee of your father. That's not cool. Oh, that's very nice. All right. Okay. So Garrett, I would like to introduce you to one of the people inside of the Dr. Lynn's Practice Ninja Facebook group. And uh, it's Michelle Carlin in Australia. And Michelle will present a, a question for you, particularly you, maybe me too, but more important, I want to hear from you. May I introduce Michelle Carlin? Hi, Hello. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. How it's hot is it over there in Australia right now? Yeah, it, it's it wasn't. Yeah, it's gonna heat up again this week too. So yeah, it's sweltering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How it's hot like, is it? Forty, forty-five Celsius. It gets up to where I live. It gets up to forty-five degrees. Yeah, <laughs> it's hot. Oh, yeah. we are in the middle of winter here. Well, okay. I'm in short. It's five thirty in the morning, and I'm in short sleeves, and I could put the aircon on. <laughs> it's that hot. Yes. Oh, let's let's all give Michelle a huge uh, round of applause <laughs> and a big heart because it's. 5.30 a.m. and Michelle got up <laughs> early for this. This is incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing that. It yeah. was worth it. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm glad you're part of this. So, Michelle, <laughs> what is your question? Do you have a particular specific question? It's kind of like a talk show, you know? Like, what question do you yeah. have? <laughs> Um, it's so lovely to meet you, Garrett. Um, Thank you. I, I Likewise. love your bark. Yeah, yeah, I've listened Thank to it online much. and I love it. <laughs> um, so, I have actually a question. It's more of a stylistic question. Uh, so, um, there's a set of variation. So overall, you know, you can hear the different voices, you know, um, a lot of the, you know, you can hear the soprano and then it goes bass and soprano and bass, but there is one section that I cannot find the, the melody or how to phrase it. And I was wondering if you could help me. Sure. So, and so it's in, um, it? so it's the variation number 37. So it's bar or measure, uh, one fifty three. 
and at 153 to um sorry 150 160 the two so it's um variation 37 and 38. uh-huh well i'll ask you what um where does the the chacon uh, rhythm usually start at the very beginning it starts on the second beat right yes yes yeah so what if um what if it's the same here what would so it that be way you, so you lean into the second beat in other words what if we have if we have <laughs> So we have it's the same rhythm you see so the way oh, okay. I the way i shape this is the same way i i shape the beginning of the piece now you know the he does switch it so that um for example in bar 60 uh in bar 57, he puts the Chacon rhythm on the downbeat. So it's not always in the same place. Right, but but most of the time, and by definition, as far as I understand it, the, the Chacon has the strong beat on the second beat, right? Oh, I think so in this case, um, in terms of looking for where is the emphasis and where is the, uh, the rhythm, um, so if I were to exaggerate what the way I would shape it, it would sound something like this. Because you hear you have your, your um, the first beat represents the quarter note. This represents the dotted quarter. Uh, then this is the eighth. So, right, it would be this. Yeah, no, that, that makes heaps of sense. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and it's that that quarter note at the end. You're really leading into that next bar, aren't you? The quarter note where? The, so so with the Chacon rhythm, you've got your, your crotchet, your dotted crotchet, and then your quaver yeah. at the end. That quaver, you're really leading into the next bar. Is that correct? Yeah. you're leading into yeah, the next great. bar uh, in the same way that you're leading into the next bar uh, here at the beginning. <laughs> You're leading yeah. into that, but then the 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 strongest beat is then is then the the second beat. So right. and even here, uh, continuing on at bar one sixty one. See what I'm doing? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So, so pretty much through the whole chacon, that's what's happening. So yeah. the phrasing is around that. Yeah, definitely going on it. Okay, that makes so much sense. It's Thank you. The, it's one of the things that's happening, and and it's one of the things that, as long as we know that it's happening, and we maybe mentally organize our our shape around that, we can decide how much how overt we want to be about that shape or how how much in some cases it doesn't necessarily need, need to be need to be so uh, pronounced so obviously but but what i try to avoid is putting emphasis in places where where it doesn't exist in, right, okay. within the framework of that chicon rhythm yeah sure great thank you so Does much that answer your question yeah, yeah it's, uh, hugely. It, it's actually, and, and probably for the whole piece too. So great. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Garrett, I really like that answer because that answers the very first question that Michelle um, asked about how we <laughs> maintain the character of the dance throughout the whole the Chacon. Finding that Chacon rhythm inside all of these uh, 16th notes <laughs> makes, it makes the whole character start to dance and lilt. And then we can find that little ribbon. Right, the, the lilting ribbon. 
I like that. Yeah. 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 Anything you want to play? I know it's 5 30 in the morning, though. <laughs> oh, that was You're not going to wake I up my neighbors. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping my elderly neighbors sleep through this because I technically shouldn't be playing at this time in the morning. But my don't you have a large like, household? You have a large household sleeping, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hubby and seven kids are sleeping at the moment. So <laughs> I've, I've already had I've already had one come down and go. I'm like, what are you doing up? And he's like, I need water. Like he's a teenager. So um, <laughs> <laughs> and then he went back to bed. But yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I was just, yeah, well, maybe um, only if you want me to play, um, maybe I could have a go at the, the couple, those couple of lines that I had organized and see if I can do it, see if I can okay. do that rhythm, if that's okay. Yeah, well, and then, then we'll move to Sister Marie Therese, I think. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay. I can't wait to hear what Sister wants to know. Yeah. Yeah, I've got my mute on because of the time. Yeah, absolutely. So if you can't hear, yeah, if you can't hear, just, you know, yeah, wave to me or something. That's good. I hear the I, I hear very distinctly the the emphasis where the dotted quarter would be. And I also hear the, the quarter note downbeat. The one that I don't hear as much is the eighth note pickup. And um, as I said before, okay. I don't think I don't think that when you're actually performing the piece that we have to accent every single every single iteration of the rhythm. But in in for the sake of this exercise, when you're trying to to sort of map it out and understand it, you could practice it um, more like this, where you where you were to play sort of forte piano. So. Oh, yeah. So that's the, you know, that's that. So for, for practicing purposes, that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely will will do that. Thank you. That's a great help. Yeah. Thank awesome. you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, that was that was a fantastic answer, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle, for getting up so early in the morning. I know you set your no, alarm. thank you. We're so excited. I'm so happy to have you, Michelle. Thank oh, you so no, much. Thank you so much. Yay. Okay, so we have Sister Marie Therese. Please, everybody, give Michelle a huge hand, a hand of applause for 5.30 in the morning, playing at that early of an hour. Wow, really quite amazing. Thank you. Okay, so I have Sister Marie Therese waiting. Hello. Hello. Good to see you again, Sister Marie Therese. I've been enjoying your, your fantastic posts in the Facebook group, the Practice Ninjas group. And uh, Sister Marie Therese, you're coming from uh, Illinois, right? Is yes, that... Alton, Illinois. It's across the river from St. Louis. Ah, okay, Alton, Illinois. Welcome from Canada, Toronto. It's cold here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sister Marie Therese, what question do you have for Eric? Um, oh, this, this is so difficult to pick because I could, you know, was thinking of a million things. My biggest one was probably what you covered actually with Michelle. So, um, you know, about uh, finding the rhythm, but that, that totally made sense. I had a question, I guess, sort of about, um, I, I don't know how to phrase it exactly. It's about articulation. Um, like in some of these places like where there are long notes with slurs how do you find like the place where you you're playing them with articulation but it's still smooth i don't know how to explain it like for example i'm looking at measure 121 or something like that um because i feel like when i do slurs sometimes i feel like they get mushy you know and you want you want everything to sound smooth but you want it to be articulate too would you just would it be like uh finger speed or is is it um more of a falling motion like i don't know uh can you just say something about articulation with lots of slurs i guess that would be my question articulation so keeping the the uh the notes clear underneath the slur with the left yes, hand. Yeah. Yes. Well, um, I I would think that Dr. Lin is going to have a lot more to say about that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Garrett. <laughs> the, the one thing that I the one thing that I uh, might 
suggest is um, that you experiment with, um, and I haven't really done it on this section, but mm -hmm. you experiment with um, with playing with an extreme amount of bow pressure. I, I really don't know if this would work, but mm -hmm. I've done this in other instances where mm -hmm. I, I wasn't getting what I wanted from my left hand, the clarity underneath the slur. Um, and you play with extreme bow pressure, extremely loud, but feather light left hand. Mm -hmm. And and so it's going to sound horrible, but it would be, you know, so this kind of thing. Uh, and so the idea is what this might be doing, what this might be accomplishing is teaching your bow to stay kind of smooth and, and you know, on the, on this connected to the string, which might be one of the things that is disconnecting it and making it not sound smooth. And the other thing that it might be doing is at the same time, uh, teaching your left hand to be as economic economical as possible with its okay. motion and so there might be two culprits that are causing um, the lack of clarity that you're experiencing one would be something happening in the bow where the bow isn't is is losing contact with the string or there are bumps in your string crossings or something like that another one might be that your left hand is getting stuck because it's working too hard and and with um, unnecessary uh, force and with unnecessary um, range of motion. Yeah. So that would be something you, you, you might experiment with. Lynn, do you, do you have anything to add to that? I love that answer because I actually have that same problem. I, have, mm -hmm. I think it's an excellent question because I also have the same problem where I, I get stuck in the left hand. I don't know if I think if I were problem solving, I put on my problem solving hat. And this is um, this goes back to the question that Ishi that you asked about how to practice. You asked how to practice efficiently. I'm going to answer it in a way of how to practice. So if I came across this problem, left hand, your question system is about left hand articulation underneath a whole bunch of slurs. Now, this is a problem that I encountered. So if I were to approach this in my practice room, I would try Garrett's suggestion, right? You said to put a lot of pressure and and light. Like left hand is what you said, so I would try that. That's, that would be experiment number one. Part of my practice process is experimentation. And then I would probably start to go into um, a general rule of whatever is practiced legato, practice it in separate bows, and vice versa, whatever is under separate bows, practice legato. So that can help clean up your left hand. So you, you, and so then you can start to hear where it's not coordinated. Like, for example, I can probably tell that third and fourth finger for me is probably sluggish. So that, that gives me the first clue, right? So when I'm practicing, I get I gather clues. I treat practicing like I'm a detective, and I talk about that in my course, Practice Techniques, in one of my Violin Ninja courses. And when I announce the prize winners, one of you will win that course, access to the course. Another thing I, I do is I start to create bowing variations. So obviously, this is a bowing variation. <laughs> I mean, this is all separate bows. Then, or you could try two slurs. Even just doing that, I can tell there's some unevenness. Then you can do threes. Then you can start to tell, whoa, which fingers are a little lopsided. And then mixing two and twos, uh, two with two slurs, two separate. Okay, so then you can reverse that bowing so it's two separate, two slurs. And once you go exhaust through all of these bowing variations, your left hand will start to even out where it was uneven before. And that's the first stage of experimentation and um, what I call the, the, the scientist. I have a practice um, framework called the detective scientist and the athlete. This is the, the, the part of the practice framework called the scientist. You're coming up with experiments to solve the problems that you encounter in the practice room. Does that answer your question, Sister Matrice? Yes, that's very helpful. Yeah? And as you were doing that, I'm, I was thinking of another one. I have not been able to do the Baroque bow hold thing that you, that you do so incredibly well. So maybe you can say something about uh, that. Uh, Whoa! Um, also, I, maybe it could be just after 44 years of doing something one way, it's hard to, you know, <laughs> learn a different way, you know. I, I guess 
I can't go up too far. Uh, I'm just trying to, okay. Ishii, we might not be able to answer that question, uh, but we can if I have time. Um, I don't go too far for the boat, Garrett. What do you do? Do you, do you stick to a modern bow hold when you play Baroque? Yeah, I, I, I have experimented with uh, moving around and uh, to, the, to the extent that I move up the bow, it's more as an exercise to, um, if I feel that something is clumsy while I'm practicing, uh, string crossings or, or uh, bow distribution or whatever, I'll go more towards the balance point because that's a place where, you know, you're not dealing with the, you know, handling the, the distribution of the weight of the bow. And that's, you know, something not just in Bach, but in anything. But uh, when I perform it using a modern bow, which is what I do, um, I don't, I don't hold the bow up higher. I, I do think it's, I think it's an interesting, I've tried it. Um, and I do think that the results are, can be very interesting. And so I, and I've seen some wonderful performances where people do that many. So I think that I encourage you to, if you find that it's giving you something, some advantage uh, to, to go ahead and do that. Um, I personally, but then uh, that all being said, I actually hold the bow, not, see, where, where's the camera? So I hold the bow, not, maybe not as, as um, far down as, as some people. My thumb, when I hold the bow is not touching the frog. So Are you is, in the leather, Garrett? I'm on the leather, yeah. Okay. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit, um, maybe a centimeter higher than, and that's something that I did actually when I was in my late thirties. <laughs> I, I um, switched. Uh, I, I moved my bow hold up um, because I observed some people who had a better control over certain bow strokes, and some of those people, not all of them, some of them seemed to be holding their bow a little higher. And I thought, well, maybe if I could do that, but I couldn't do it. And then I forced mm -hmm. myself to do it for two weeks. And uh, then it was wonderful. And I and and now I can't hold the bow uh, in the place where I held it for the first 30 <laughs> years of my, <laughs> I can't play that way. So I think it's possible. Any any kind of change you want to make is possible if you make yourself do it for a certain amount of time and don't let yourself do it the way you're used to doing. Yeah, I think. But I mean, I like what Garrett said. If it doesn't work for you, then don't do it. Just when we try. Okay, I <laughs> that makes go sense. I, I go back and forth. I don't always play Baroque, choking up the bow. I sometimes go right back to my. I, I mean, you get more power from the bow when you go mm -hmm. close to the frog. You just okay you can harness the power of the the weight at that bottom part of your bow, right? When you're down there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, I mean, I've seen people hold it. I think it was Johnny Gandelsman. I think he yeah, holds it yeah. pretty high, and he still gets quite a lot of power. That's a wonderful boat. example. Really, really, yeah, he's a great a, example. Yeah, he yeah, a video of his. He plays the whole all six uh, live, and and he wow. holds it very very high. Up. Um, and I think the main one of the, not just the string crossings and the control and everything, but one of the other reasons to do that is if you're wanting to counteract what the baroque what the modern bow does, which is not necessarily appropriate for for Bach, which is which is it adds sustain near the tip and you know because the modern bow is heavy and strong near the tip and the baroque bow is not and so mm -hmm. holding the bow higher up makes the tip lighter and it gives you the sensation of that natural re release in the upper part of the bow that it, it gives you some version of that uh, that a baroque bow would do and then if you, if you practice like that and you start to feel that, and then you go back to the, to the place that's comfortable for you and you still release, you know, you can, you can still release. And another thing you can do is just perhaps don't use the upper part. If you're comfortable holding the bow in the normal place that you hold it close to the frog, don't go uh, to the upper part of the bow so much you know you can play yeah and uh, strings are out of tune but um 
And I, I just played an uppo on the, on the second one because uh, sometimes I do that and sometimes I do all downs and I, and I think there's all different ways. Now, if I were playing a Baroque bow, which I have experimented with, I wouldn't do an uppo on a strong beat. It doesn't for me because the, because the down, the, the way the Baroque bow is constructed, it feels to me as though it's the chords work better all on, mostly on down bows. Okay. Yeah. I agree. That's that, and that is a great reason to choose bowings that emulate a, a Baroque bow, even with the modern bow. So even though we have the power with a mo modern bow, and even though we can hold the modern bow with the, you know, right down the frog, we can still choose to play stylistically Baroque. Like if you have a, let's say, an acoustic violin, you can choose to play R&B. You can choose mm -hmm. to play hip hop. You can choose to play jazz on this ancient instrument, right? Right. So it's just a matter of how you choose to play the style, right? What style you decide to choose. And then you could play Van Halen if you wanted, right? <laughs> you have to make that choice. <laughs> so it's up to you. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think, did you get to what you wanted out of this session with Gary? Did you want to play a little note, a few notes? I, I, I could try. I, although I have to say, I'm a little nervous. This is the first time I've done a master class since 1991. So <laughs> let's see. <laughs> I want to think more about what you were saying before about that Chaconne rhythm, and so bringing up the second beat a little bit more. Mm getting in the way a little bit but um yeah, this is an interesting uh place where it, it might be the case that that the chaconne rhythm is displaced from its okay. normal its normal position we uh, pointed that out much earlier in the piece uh, i think part 59 or whatever that was where we have where it's on the downbeat instead of mm -hmm. the second beat. here the, the the section that you were playing um, it, it feels almost as though the it, it's on the if it is there it's on the downbeat now okay something like that actually but the one suggestion that I would give you is to I noticed you did a different Boeing and and I I change, if I change a, a slur in Bach, I try to imitate the, the original gesture. In other words, I look at the slur and I try to create empty space, like silence, a little bit of silence before the slur. Not mm -hmm. always, but, but a little bit before and certainly a little bit after. And okay. so um, if you're changing if you're slurring over a bar line where there where where there is no slur, that that obscures that a little bit. But um, okay. if you're if you have a very long slur and you want to change bows, it's possible to do. Some people do. Um, uh, I do. Uh, Dr. Lin was talking about this as one gesture, mm -hmm. and because I like to, that to me is one of the most poignant uh, moments in the in the whole piece. And uh, so I want a lot of power on that. And so I do change bows, but mm -hmm. I try to shape it the same way. So dee da da dee da dee da. So I do, you see, but what I, another thing, the, the very important thing is this, that there's silence here. In other words, because that's the end of the slurred group. And so, uh, you know, why is, that slur there and what is it trying to do it's it's if you think of the slur as separating one thing from another and you separate it with the uh, articulation and with also with with silence okay so, yeah 
I, I would have to look at the original. I, I have two Boeings written in there. I, I couldn't tell you what edition this is. This was something a teacher gave me many years ago, and any writing is in Russian, so I don't really know. But um, the other Boeing that's in here is... <laughs> Yeah, and so I would suggest that is the what Bach wrote that Boeing. At, okay, and uh, I would suggest um, again, uh, like Lynn said, um, treating the slurs as gestures. So this one, not this. Okay, but this. because I think it creates this beautiful lilt. And then yes. that to me sounds more like you're holding a Baroque bow, even if you're not holding a Baroque bow or you're holding it mm -hmm. like a Baroque bow. That's my, that's my take on it. Okay, that's very helpful. I'll yes, take a look at those Thank stories. you so much for thank you. participating in the challenge and giving it your all. And yes, I agree with Michelle here. It sounds like a dance. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. We want to channel the dance. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sister Mertrez. Thank you. Thank you. Gara, thank you so much for sharing this time with us and sharing your expertise. Everyone give a huge heart, the biggest heart you could possibly give to Garrett right now. He <laughs> took some busy, some time out of his hugely busy schedule from the Met to join us for this. This is really, really special. I mean, I've been dying to have Garrett collaborate and finally we get to do it. I'm so happy. Give your best love to Garrett online. Please, please, please go follow his Instagram account. Thank Eric, you, do you have anything to share with us at the it's end here? My pleasure and an honor, and I'm a huge fan of yours, so this was a, a real honor for me. Likewise, um, I'm super excited to have you for February 7th, because that is when uh, Gary is giving his master class specifically on Bach for the Winter Violin Boot Camp um, students. Thank you so much, Gary. Do you have anything else? No? Nothing to say? Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer, but um, if you ask me to say something, I might... Uh, I, I might talk forever, so. <laughs> well, how about I reserve that uh, honor yeah, for the people who are inside on February 7th, in sure. the Winter Violin Bootcamp, which, which segues beautifully because I will start talking about the Winter Violin Bootcamp. Okay, so thank you, Garrett, unless you want to hang out with us. <laughs> My pleasure. Well, you can take me off. Uh, and, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye everybody. So as I mentioned, Garrett is going to be teaching a whole 90-minute masterclass on Bach. And the, um, the big announcement that I have is that my Winter Violin Bootcamp is, the doors open. The doors are open for my Winter Violin Bootcamp officially. I've been really leaking it out for a while. And because I've been leaking it out for a while, I have um, students who are already enrolled. And you met them on day two. You met Jill, you met Nikki. And I have previous bootcamp students in here. Chica is one of them. Ishii is one of them. Uh, Kendra. Hi, Kendra. You're out there. I know you're out there. So, um, uh, yeah, Nikki is here. Nikki is there. So yeah, Nikki's inside the boot camp. So if you're here and inside the boot camp, please let us know you're in the boot camp, what you think of it. We'd love to know what you think of boot camp. This is my fourth one. So if you're here, if you attended one of my boot camps, please share in the comments what you think, how it's been for you, how it's changed your life. I try my best to help every person inside the boot camp achieve whatever they want to do on the violin. And that is my absolute passion. I hope you can tell that I absolutely love to help you. And this is why I'm here and created this entire challenge just for you. It makes me so happy to see everyone around the world getting together inside the Facebook group, online, getting together. And it's such a such an interesting time of, of the of the world, isn't it? We have a pandemic going on, and yet we can connect with such gorgeous, gorgeous music. So the boot camp is six weeks long. For those of you who want to enter, I welcome you to join this uh, experience. Ishii is highly, says it's highly recommended. Yay. That's, this is wonderful. Chica was here for my winter violin boot camp. I did the boot camp a year ago, and it was wonderful. See, they, there you go. Um, so we have... Guest artists, Garrett is one of them. I also have Vijay Gupta. Vijay Gupta is the artistic director of Street Symphony, and Vijay used to play in the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Vijay is going to give a 90-minute masterclass. We got to play for Vijay. And I don't know if you saw his um, post that I reposted on my Instagram stories. He played the Chacon 
in uh, with using a baroque bow it was stunning and i also have richard roberts who is the concert master of the montreal symphony orchestra richard has agreed to come and give a whole class as well for my boot camp students i'm super excited i always get the best artists to come and i also give classes just like this so if you like the chacon challenge i give a fri friday fundamentals class every single week and i choose the topic of the class according to what you want so when you sign up for boot camp, you basically say, Lynn, I've always had trouble with articulation. I've always had trouble with martelet. I've always had trouble with intonation. I build a whole class around it for you. And we do that every single week. And you will be inside a private Zoom class with me. We can actually have a conversation back and forth. It's not just one way. We can actually have this conversation and play together. Um, and I also give special linja sessions these are my custom um my uh, proprietary practice sessions i actually practice with you you get to practice with me just like this so you get to join me in a practice session i'll lead you through a practice session from the very first minutes where we focus together and i lead you through time segments and we go through these time segments where you really focus on what you want and what you want to get done in that hour and i swear to gosh if you do this with me. You'll get more done in that hour than you will three hours practicing in one day. Nikki says, I did summer and I'm back in winter. It's great. Yes, that's right. Chica says the fundamental class was very insightful and loved all the homework. Yeah. So that, that, those are my lingerie sessions and you'll get inside a very private Facebook group just for winter violin camp students. And inside actually people take that chance to go live. You go live inside the group and you can play whatever you like. You can practice inside the group. I've had people do that before. And uh, you get a lot out of playing live for, for people watching. Puts you on the spot. Uh, let's see, what else? You get private lessons with me, of course. And uh, I'm deciding that for the new year. It is the new year, right? It's January 2022. I've decided as a New Year's gift to you, the first three people who join, who sign up for Violin Bootcamp, you'll get an extra one hour private session with me. That's what I'm going to give to the first three people who sign up for Bootcamp. So if you'd like to do that, um, you can definitely check out the link for Bootcamp here, which I'll put in the chat. And check that out, and then you can just sign up for a phone call with me, just to, so we can chat about what you'd like to get accomplished in the year and how I can help you, and if bootcamp's going to be fit, a good fit for you. There's two different tiers, and uh, tier one is more involved. If you're more busy, then you can join tier two. Um, so check out the website; the prices are all there. And like you saw, um, people have gone through my boot camps, all four of them. Some people have returned again, and uh, she says, Lynn's practice sessions has really changed my life. Yay! See, this is really great. Nick, thank you so much. You were so great, Dr. Lynn. Thank you for the Chacon Challenge. That's my absolute pleasure, Nick. I'm so glad to have you here. Okay, so I know you're waiting. You're waiting for the prize winners, aren't you? <laughs> I have a surprise for you, actually. Let me put my violin down. If you have any questions about boot camp, Please let me know. I'm here to answer them all. So you're waiting for the winners of the Chacon Challenge. Okay. So I just give me a second here. And I need to share a screen so I can announce the winners. Okay, give me a second. All right. Share screen. Window. Oh, Jeff, you have a question? Okay, give me a second to ask your, ask your question. Hi, Jeff. Okay, so you have a question about how many sessions should be? Okay, so Friday Fundamentals is once a week. So there's six weeks in the boot camp. There's six of these classes. So just like the Chacon Challenge, you get a class just like this, one every week. And master classes are every single week as well, an hour and a half each week on a Monday. Um, so three of them are with me and three of them are with my guests. The Linja sessions I'm going to hold twice a week. So you get to practice twice a week with me. And there is a graduation recital. I forgot to mention that on March 13th. So whatever you're working on, you get a chance to perform at the end. And the Facebook group, you can submit videos any single time, anytime you want. So just like the Dr. Lin's Practice Ninjas Facebook group, you can submit videos and I'm there to give you my comments and cheer you on. Um, that is, let's see, any other questions? I think I answered your question, right, Jeff? Okay. 
All right. Hi, Naya. Thank you so much, Miss Lynn. You're welcome. I would never have attempted Chacon if it was not for you. Um, I'm so glad to hear that. Okay, so you're waiting for the winners. Let me share my screen. Okay, give me a second here. Okay. Give me a second. All right. Can you see that? Okay. All right. So here we are, the moment you've been waiting for, the winners of the Chacon Challenge. First of all, I have some special mentions to make. Okay, I like to make this Chacon Challenge fun. I want to say thank you to everyone who participated because I have been watching all of your videos and your posts inside the group and on public social media. Thank you so much for participating. So I do want to point out a few special mentions. I'm giving out some special awards called Here's the first one, the best bow retake award. <laughs> I saw a person have the most beautiful cords with a beautiful retake. I wanted to give this award to Jill Ripley. Hi, Jill, if you're there, please say hi. You got the best bow retake award. If you haven't seen it, go into the Facebook group, the Practice Ninjas Facebook group, and check out Jill's beautiful video where she demonstrates the most beautiful bow retake. <laughs> Jill, you got the, that award. So I have an award for most authentic setup award. <laughs> and the most authentic setup award goes to Ruth Klein Cook. Thank you for demonstrating what it's like to hear a Baroque instrument with a Baroque bow. I really appreciated that. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out in the Facebook group. Ruth sets, uh, sent in a great practice video. Congratulations, congratulations. I'm giving out the Yehudi Menuhin Award. <laughs> this, award is going to Jean, Jean Huang. I thought this was hilarious that Jean Huang sent in a practice video and Facebook flagged his video thinking it was a recording of Yehudi Menuhin. So I decided to give Jean the Yehudi Menuhin award. Congrats, Jean. Okay, so the next award I'm giving out is a promising Young Talent Award. I love it when people are so motivated and you're so young, this person, uh, it got me so excited because I remember what it was like to be young. And I would like to give this award to Naya Naroha in India. Hi, Naya. I, can, I know you're there. Please say hi. Oops, what happened? Oh, okay, we got, we're still there. We're still here. Okay, we're still here. Okay, congratulations, Naya. I, Naya posted a video of her practicing Shekong for the first time, and it was stunning. When I was 10, I was literally playing Suzuki Book One or Happy Farmer, or something like that. So Naya, congratulations. We have some people saying congratulations. Look at these comments coming in. Yay. Okay, I have the best self-taught Chacon Award. Some of you have been learning this piece for the very first time, and it's been amazing, 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 amazing to see this progress. So I am giving this award, best self-taught Chacon Award, to... Chica Wee. Hi, Chica. Please say hi. <laughs> Congratulations, Chica. Chica was amazing learning Chacon from scratch, and it sounded like she had been playing for years. Years. I could not believe it. Really great stuff. I have another last award here. I'm calling this the Intrepid Newbie Award. I'm giving this award to someone who is um, tackling the Chacon even at a novice level, and I'm giving this award to... Jennifer Jow. Jennifer, are you there? Please say hi if you are. Jennifer, congratulations. Jennifer took my Paganini 5 challenge. Imagine that. A beginner who had just played for nine months was in Suzuki Book 1 and decided to take my Paganini Caprice Number 5 challenge. Jennifer deserves this intrepid newbie award for sure. And the next challenge she takes on, Jennifer takes on Chacon, Bach Chacon. I think that deserves a really... Big round of applause, huge round of applause. Okay, yes, well done everybody, well done, congratulations. Okay, so now I'm gonna to get to the final awards that you've all been waiting for. Winners of the Chacon Challenge, here we go. Moment you've all been waiting for. Let's recap here, the prizes that I'm giving out is a free one hour lesson with me. Another prize I'm giving out is free access to my four online courses called the Violin Ninja Courses. And the biggest prize I'm giving out is a scholarship to my Winter Violin Bootcamp. And so here are the three winners of the Chacon Challenge. 
In third place with 150 points. Third prize goes to Chica. Chica, we congratulations, Chica. You got third prize. Congrats. Just contact me. We'll talk, okay? Okay, in second place with 360 points. Okay, so the second place and the first place got really, really, really close. Second place goes to Sister Marie Therese Swizinski. Hello, Sister Marie Therese. Congratulations. Are you there? I know you're there. Say hi if you can. <laughs> Congratulations. So it was really close, neck and neck. Okay. The winner of first place with 370 points, just 10 points more, it was basically a tie, is Michelle Carlin. Michelle, congratulations. All right, everybody who participated, I wish you all the best and thank you from the bottom of my heart for participating in my Chacon Challenge. Congratulations to all of you. All of you are phenomenal and fantastic. I appreciate you being with me. And it's been a blast. I hope that you got something out of this challenge. I would love for you to type into the chat what you learned, okay? What is the number one thing that pops into your head right now? What can you take away from this challenge? Is it articulation? Is it the baseline? Is it the rhythm of the chacon? Is it, um, artic or is it uh, slurring? Is it uh, Baroque style? What is the number one thing that you've got from this challenge? Type it into the chat and please share so that we can all get collective knowledge and walk away with something beneficial from this experience. I hope this starts your 2022 off on a good note. I know it did for me. And I hope to see you in Winter Violent Bootcamp. If you'd like to join me, I'm here. My calendar is wide open. So just give me a call and we'll talk about whether you can, um, you want to join me in tier one or tier two and how we can get you going for the next uh, six weeks. Okay. All right. Oh, great. We have some great things here. Yay. Chica says not being afraid to tackle something that is hard. Ishi likes the ribbon. That is great. That is great. Okay. So my friends, uh, look at this. Oh, more comments. Nick likes the analysis tools and technical tricks. Yeah. Annette in British Columbia. Thank you for giving of your time to do this. Proper recording was a big moment for me. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Yay. I'm so glad. Okay. Good, good, good. Oh, wow. There's more. There's more. Ah, Wendy says the fourths and fifths work. Good. Those are my preparatory exercises. Jeffrey, I need more art, gentle articulation. That's great. Uh, Sister Marie Therese, I learned to think more in terms of harmony. I Yeah, that's the best part of learning about Bach and baseline. And Naya, chords. You never did chords before? You're welcome, Michelle. This has been amazing. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. And... Um, Oh, Sayumi says marshmallow fingertips from session two. I, okay, good. That helps me quite a bit. So if there is nothing else, to, I think that I hope oh, I didn't forget anything. If not, then you can always message me. You can hit me up on um, Lin Kuo, Lin at linquo.com. That's my email address. And you can hit me up on social media, Instagram, Facebook. I respond to messages very quickly, as I think most of you know. And I'm here all the time. So congratulations to everybody who participated. Congratulations to the winners. I look forward to seeing you all online. And I look forward to seeing those of you who want to join me in Winter Violin Bootcamp. We will have more fun just like this in six weeks. And we'll go deeper. And of course, we'll laugh lots and have tons of fun. Okay? All right, everybody. Love you all. Oh, the, the messages keep coming in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, I will let you go. We're 10 minutes over time. Okay, see you in the next challenge, my friends. Have a wonderful um, Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.